Hallelujah. All right, and let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> As I was doing the list this morning, the Lord brought something to my mind there in Ephesians 6. Chapter number 6, verse number 10. <clears throat> Where the Lord says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I want to talk to us for just a little while this morning about these verses. I know I could have went ahead and read on through the pieces of the armor, but that's not where the Lord took me to this morning. He wants to talk to us today about standing. Yeah. Our standing. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, I love you right now, and I thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. I'm thankful, Lord, that you do provide us with the armor that we need for the things that we need, Lord, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, be able to stand, Lord, and in your purpose and in your plan for our lives. Lord, I pray now that you would just reveal to us what it is that you want us to take on today, what you are speaking into our spirits, Lord. I pray that we'll openly receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for standing this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Last part of the 13, we're actually the whole verse of 13. That last part says that she may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. But now here I want to clarify something in that before I start back on the front part of this. I want to clarify that the evil day does not necessarily mean at the end of time. The evil day can be today. The evil day can be when that temptation throws itself up in your face and dares you to take part in it. Right. The evil day can be that time when, right. when you're just about to blast somebody wide open, just blast them wide open for what they have done or said into your life. That's right. That evil day can come in many different shapes, forms, and fashions. But if we're doing what we need to do when we're putting on that whole armor of God every day. Yeah. Right. Every day. We can pick up that armor, put it on, and then we can go out and we can take whatever the adversary throws at us. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Right. Now, <clears throat> most of us, we've probably heard about the armor, about the different parts of the armor. Of course, we have the the belt of truth, or the you know, the, having your loins girt about the truth. Yeah. We have the breastplate of righteousness. Right. We have the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and then the shield of faith. With it, you'll be able to quench all the fire darts the wicked. And then we have the helmet of salvation, which is that part that the Lord keeps his hand upon your mind. He covers your, your mind from being destroyed or attacked or, or put into a state of depression. Hello? Yeah. 
Sometimes we get in depression because we haven't put that helmet on today. But if you've got that helmet, there's no way the adversary can get to it. Your mind's covered. That's right. Your head's covered. And then we've got the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Put on that, that uh, sword every day. It's just when we pick up that Bible, when we get to read into the Word of God, we're saying, yep, yeah, got to take the sword with me. That's right. May run into something today that I might need to. Work on a little bit. Yeah. These parts are all necessary for a Christian's walk yeah. to be a successful walk That's in right. this life. Because the Bible tells us that the devil has a few purposes, and that's all he has, and that's to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right, right. Sure. He has purposed himself to destroy you. No matter what. He wants you to be destroyed. Right. He wants you to be destroyed if you're lost. But he really, really wants you destroyed if you're saved. That's right. He wants to put you up on his trophy wall in hell and say, look here, I took that one away from God. God gave them a chance. They, they tried a little bit, but they failed. Now I've got their head on my wall, he says. Right. So, when we come into the power of his might, the Bible says, what is that, the power of his might? That's the power of his might. That's the power that God has over everything. We come into that power. How do we do that? We bring ourselves in contact with Him. We bring ourselves into His presence. You're not going to put on the armor of Christ if you don't get close to it. That's right. That's right. You can put it on, you think, but it'll be a little faulty. It'll still have a little cheek to it now. Right. That little spot that ain't covered. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's right. But when we put on the armor of Christ, we're ready to take on whatever the world has to shoot at us, whatever the world has to offer, whatever the devil wants to throw in our path. That's right. You got your feet shod. What was it? Never again, remember what exactly. Huh? Preparation. Preparation. Preparation of righteousness. Yeah. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. I wasn't going to roll this, but I guess I am. Oh. Uh, you know, Sister Blissett, when you're, when you're shot with the preparation of peace, peace means that everything's going to be all right. You know what, Brother Jordan, when you start walking in peace, you're not going to trip. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hello? You ain't going to stop your toe and go, oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you got the proper arm on the system, there you go. Yeah. You don't worry about this, my students this year. When you got what the Lord has provided, right. and you've got what you need. Right. Now I don't have to worry about what's going to happen today. Amen. How am I going to do this? How am I going to make it through? Don't have to worry about that because I have the help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what the armor really is. <clears throat> we might think, when we hear the armor of the Lord, we might think of that old story about David. Standing in there in the king's tent saying, I'll fight that guy. Yeah. He said, here, you're going to take my arm. That stuff ain't approved. Saul was here. David was here. Yeah. You can't wear that arm. Right. They said it's not Why? Because he had proved it. That's it. 
We have to prove the armor of the Lord in the same way. We won't wear, we won't gird up our lawn and put on our belt of truth if we hadn't been getting into this word, if we hadn't been experiencing the Lord. You're not going to trust somebody you don't know nothing about. Right. If you do, the Bible says I'm not supposed to talk about your food. So you ain't real smart. That's right. If you trust somebody that you just don't know nothing about, that's that's not showing good sense. That's right. The Lord wants us. That's why He said, "Study to show thyself approved." Amen. In other words, He said, "Study to prove it to yourself who I am." All right. Yeah. Let, let me prove it to you what I can do and, and who I am. Yeah. That's why he says you'll never outgive me. Because if you try to give him a little, he's going to give you more. Mm, that's right. You give him a little bit of your faith, he's going to give you something that's going to build that faith. Right. That's exactly yeah. right. right. He's going to give you a circumstance or a situation or a blessing. He's going to do something. He'll give you something to make it grow. Right, that's right. Remember what well, Paul said? He said, he sowed and Paul's water and God gave him increase. Who gave him the increase? God. God. But this is this is a continual thing. Let's look back at that at the verses again. I hope you got your Bible me. Finally, my brother, which means, all right, now let's get down to the brass tacks. Yeah. Right. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. That means be strong in his faith. Because if you remember, your strength comes from your praise. And you're not going to praise somebody you don't know. So if you're praising him and you have strength, then you're, you're knowing the Lord. You're getting to know him more. And when you're knowing of him and your knowledge of him, you're going to receive more and more power. That's right. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Oh, wait a minute, I left that. And in the power of his might. There again, <clears throat> we're not just talking about power of authority. We're talking about the power. That's the power of his might. That means yeah. that, that part of God that cannot do anything except exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask for. Right. He's not just, oh yeah, that's God. He's not just yeah, that yeah, that uh, you know, you know, just just God. No, uh, uh, he's the Almighty. He is the Great I Am. He yes, is sir, the sir, everlasting sir. Father. Amen. He's everything Amen. above Amen. and beyond what we could actually ever even think or comprehend. Amen. Amen. He's above. Yes, sir. He's sure. past. Yes. The power of his might. You're, you're, we just can't even fathom what that can be. I'm going to be honest with you. Because you're talking about the Father of creation, the one who spoke one word, and we went from total darkness to light. Mm -hmm. One word. Mm -hmm. All he was waiting on, all creation was waiting on, Brother Grover, was to hear that one word, because he said, let there be and then it, all creation was waiting. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Anybody got that kind of power? Mm -hmm. uh, see why we don't lean on ourselves? Right. We don't have that kind of power. No. It's not in us to have that kind of power. Yeah, we have the Spirit of the Lord in us, and He gave us power. 
But we don't hold that kind of power. We couldn't contain it. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What's the wild? That's the strategies. Yeah. That's the strategies of the devil. You know, he is. He, he's, in the, he's in the warfare. Yep. You know, he, he is. So he's, he's very strategic in what he does. Right. He has strategies. He says, I know if I do this, this will destroy our marriage. Or if I do that, it will destroy uh, a, a relationship between a mother and a daughter. Right. Or a father and a son. Or a father and a daughter. Come on. Yeah. I know if I do this, that this will break up two friends. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's his main purpose this moment, is if he can get us solitary. Amen. If he can get us all alone and by ourselves, then he can start working on us. He can start messing with our mind to the point where he can get a victory over us. Right. That's exactly right, brother. Keep all the way down. But if, yeah. if, if we're if we're covered with the armor of God, then now we have a covering and a protection from that. That's right. That's right. We have a covering and a protection that keeps. Well, no. Go ahead, Pastor. You remember Brother Duffin when he told Moses, he said, I can't let you see my face or you'll die. No That's man right. can see my face and die. He said, but when I pass by, I'm going to put my hand in front of you, but I'm going to let you see my hinder parts. The armor of God is God's hand of protection over us, in front of us, between us and everything else. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. He keeps us from harm. He guards our mind. Because he keeps his hand of protection upon us, in front of us, over us. Only if we let him. If we don't let him, he'll remove that hand. Because God is a gentleman. He will not force himself upon anyone. He didn't give you the Holy Ghost because it just only he wanted you to have it. He gave you the Holy Ghost because you wanted it. And with that comes that hand of protection. But now, let me give you a word of warning. If you rebuke that, or you say, I don't really need that. That hand of protection will start to move away. Yeah. I can get this by myself. Watch out. I can do this on my own. I don't need any. Hello. Watch out. You're going to see some movement here. That's right. <laughs> God wants us every day to make a decision for him. That's why it says, if you look if you look out there with me, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. We don't need a part of it. We don't need to pick up and say, well, I'll take the belt of truth with me today and leave everything else here. I'll take this, but I'll leave that. I don't really know that I, you know, that's kind of heavy. Carrying that helmet, I think I'll just leave it, leave it alone. Gotta have it too. Gotta have it all. The whole armor. That's right. We can't just pick up a little bit and leave the rest. If you do, you're still vulnerable. You're still very much going to be in danger of being destroyed. Second 
Corinthians 10, 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God, who pull it down with strong holes. For our weapons are not carnal. That means we can't see them, we can't touch them, we can't pick them up. Hello? They're not carnal. That's right. That's right. Ooh, but they're mighty. Amen. They're mighty because they're spiritual. What you can see in this world, what you can see right here before you, is not powerful. It's what you can't see that's operating in this world is what's powerful. Amen. Amen. Bible tells us right there, in that next verse, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What we're wrestling against is not what you can see. It's not what you can touch with your fingers. Oh, this is a hard life. Yeah, this is a hard life because of what's going on behind the scenes. It's a hard life because what's going on every day that's coming against us And if, it, it, it don't give us a break. Every day, the spiritual forces in this world is determined to make you have a bad day. That's right. It's determined to make you fall. But Jesus said, I give you power over scorpions. I give you power over deadly things. He right. said, I give you power over devils. That's right. Hello. Amen. Amen. He gives us power. You know where that power is at? It's in that armor. Yeah. That armor contains the power. So when we put on the armor of God, we take the power of God with us. But if we're not putting on that armor, we're more or less saying, I've got this, God. And God just steps back and says, well, I guess we'll see how that works out for you. We can't just come to God when we need a bill paid. We can't just come to God when we've got a hurt or an ache, pain, or sickness. We can't just come to God when it's convenient for us and expect to keep the whole armor of God. Amen. Yeah. If we're going to take it, we've got to take it. Mm -hmm. We've got to take all of it. That's right. That's right. He doesn't want a partial custody. He wants full custody of us. Yes, sir. Anybody know what that means when you got custody of somebody? That's right. That means that you have authority in their life to make decisions for them. That's right. That's what God wants. He wants full custody so he can make decisions in our life for them because his are right and his are perfect and his are true and his are loving. Ours are wrong. That's right. Ours are destructive. Ours are detrimental to our health to our well-being, to our mental capacity, right. our mental stability, let me tell you that differently. If we're leaning on our arm, we're cursed. But if we're leaning on God's hand, we're fully protected. Right. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world. <clears throat> Regardless of what you might have been taught, the Bible tells us. <clears throat> 
that the devil is the ruler of this world. This is God. Now God's more powerful than the devil. Amen. Yeah. But he's the prince of the power of the air. Jesus is all powerful. We're not. For us to be able to do what we need to do, we have to fully turn to Him. And then we have the power of Christ that lies within us. Then we have that covering of the hand. Then we have what we need to come against Amen. the devil's strategies and tactics. If you ever wonder why it is it just seems like everything goes wrong you just can't get it to be right Maybe we need to take a step back and look and say, am I fully turning over to God or am I holding back something? Come on. Am I holding back a little bit on this? Because verse 13, it tells us real plainly, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand. Withstand means to stand up, right? Yep. With stand. When you build a house nowadays, they want you to put them little hurricane straps on the top of the roof on each rafter so that it can withstand a certain amount of wind. Without those, the roof flops. Call them hurricane straps. But for us to withstand the wind that's blowing in this world, we've got to have God. Amen. We've got to be anchored in Him so that we can stand. Remember, He's our anchor. Amen. We can stand fast as long as we're holding on to Him. Come on. That's right. Amen. The devil wants to destroy us. That's part of what this month of consecration is. Is we don't want to be destroyed. Amen. Amen. This month of consecration is bringing us closer to the Lord. It's being letting us be more aware of what's happening in our lives and to see that we do have what we need to walk right and to do right and to have everything working like it should. That's right. Oh, you're still going to have some troubles. Of course. This is life. As long as we're here, there's going to be some troubles. Yes, sir, bro. The troubles stop when we get there, don't you think? That's, right. That's, That's right. what the Bible tells us, is the troubles stop when we get to heaven. But right. you know, if we don't live it here, we'll never get there. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. We can't expect the mercies of God if we've never said, I want to know. If we've never said, I really want to get closer to you. And most of all, if we've never said, I fully trust you. You know, that's why a lot of people will walk out of the church they might get to know a little bit about God, but they never get to the point of actually trusting. When we get to that point where we can trust Him, we put our lives in His hands. Who better to do? He created us with those hands. Why not put our safety and our concerns and our worries and our fears and our provision and everything in those Amen. 
big old yeah. capable hand. Yeah. <laughs> We think we hold on to it just a little longer, we can fix it. Yeah, we think we can. We, we think, well, I got this, I can fix it. Or we may not do it thinking, but that's why this kind of a message will come forth in our area. So it'll make us more aware yes. of what needs to be fixed yes. or what needs to be done. Word, Lord. Yeah. Because without this kind of word, without the kind of word that the Lord gives us on a regular basis, we may forget. We may we may not we may not fully be thinking about. Well, I didn't realize I was doing that. Anybody ever done that? I have. Amen. I've done. I would myself. Lord, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking that I was doing it like that, or I had that kind of mentality about it. But now, since you brought that word, for, I see where I have kind of gone astray here. Yeah. I've seen where I've been messing up. So now it's time for me to turn back and, and let's do this right. That's right. Yeah. Now that I have been, had instruction, now I have grown a little bit and I'm going to step into a, a different place with you now. That's it. I'm no longer a kindergartner. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for first grade. Right. I, I had a little knowledge, a little instruction. Now let's go on yeah. and move on into perfection here. What we're striving for, remember? Amen. When you get up in the morning, try, I'm trying this, every morning when you get up in the morning, try your best. The first thing that comes in your mind is not, oh, did I pay this bill? Or, oh, I've got to go fix breakfast for this. Or, I've got to go do this. Or, I've got to go do that. First thing that comes in your mind should be, Lord, what are we doing today? Or, Lord, I love you. You know, I woke up this morning with my mind. Yes. Stay on Jesus. Yeah. Yep. If you wake up this morning, every morning, and the first thing you've got is a word for the Lord, you'll be surprised. And I've done it just to see it. I, I surprised your day will go so much better. Always. Oh, you'll be surprised by it. Yes. Remember, the Bible tells us that our strength comes from our praise. praise. Yeah. Am I right, Brother Dippin? It's praise or worship. It's praise, isn't it? Our strength is from our praise. I think, I think I'm right about that. It's one of the two in which ways. Praise or worship. You praise the Lord for the things that he's done for you. You worship him for who he is. That's exactly right. That's the difference between praise and worship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But if we'll just strive to do that this year, there again, new year, new year. Actually, hey, there's another way you can look at that, Brother Steve. Yes, sir. New year, new gear. Put on the whole armor of Christ. That's right. Amen. 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 But, Brother George, you can't go to the football field without the right gear on. You're going to get hurt. That's right. You can't go into this, into this world without the right gear on. Her devastation is on its way. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stand together this morning. I know this has been Sunday school. We had our we had our Holy Ghost breakdown before Sunday school. <laughs> That's the truth. If you need something from the Lord this morning, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to ask you to do anything except one little thing. If you need something from the Lord, I just want you to lift your hand and say, Lord, I need you today.
Yes, yes. I need your mercy. I need your righteousness. I need your blessing. Whatever it is that you need, let your petition be made now to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I need God. Thank you. Thank you. 